Hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie Paderick, Adweek's executive editor, and we are starting a brand new live show today. This is our first time recording. It's called Adweek Together, and the whole purpose is to have a, a moment uh, in the middle of the day um, to just touch base about how we are all navigating the new normal. So we're going to have, you know, sort of a rotating cast of hosts and guests, starting with our staff. Um, today, you can see I'm joined by Chris Ahrens, uh, my amazing colleague. He is the managing editor of Adweek's newsroom and also the, uh, the director of our visual newsroom. Uh, so he has a background in video, which is coming in handy right now. <laughs> right, Chris? It is for all of us on multiple levels. Thanks, yeah. Steph. Absolutely. And, um, and you're going to be hearing from different staff members each day um, just about what they're seeing sort of in their different areas, you know, how the coronavirus uh, crisis is playing out um, on all of the beats that we cover and all of the industries that we cover and serve. Um, I'll say, too, that we really are hoping to connect with you. Um, we'd love to bring uh, our readers and our viewers on as guests as well. So while this week we'll be starting with Adweek staff, Next week, we'll be looking to, you know, sign you up to come onto this show and talk with us about um, how you're navigating this, you know, your agency and your brand and your tech company. Um, and we're going to be sharing everything from, you know, the business implications of this to also very practical, how are you handling work from home, as so many of us are now. Uh, I'll, I'll say that uh, you might see a cameo from my three-year-old or my mini schnauzer today. Anything could happen. <laughs> so. Um, Chris, you know, to start as managing editor of our newsroom, you have played such a pivotal role just in the last week of moving 50 journalists, um, you know, from our offices on Madison Avenue in New York, you know, into each of their homes and making sure that we uh, we were still, you know, serving readers. Um, I can say last week we published 230 stories on adweek.com. Mm -hmm. About 130 of those were about coronavirus alone. Um, and then we also uh, put, to put out a print issue in the middle of all of this, too. It came out yesterday. So, Chris, what has that uh, very quick shift been like? How have you navigated that? Yeah, it's, it's um, truly been a team effort. Uh, that, that, that term has been tossed around a lot these past few weeks. Um, technology has helped. Um, everyone has gotten up to speed on how we use video conference for Slack. Slack in the office was always sort of just a chat function. Of course, Zoom has played an important part in all of us getting together for our editorial meeting every morning at 1030. Uh, and then throughout the day, um, you know, we are already a remote newsroom in a lot of ways. We have editors across the country in Portland and Birmingham and reporters in Austin and Minneapolis. Um, and so we're sort of feeling what they feel on a daily basis, all working remotely. But as you said, we did put out an issue last week. Um, and uh, I know you can talk a little bit more specifically about that. But it was, it was a genius cover by Lisa Granitstein, our editor, um, of taking a Zoom capture from a Deutsch New York Zoom conference as they were navigating their new normal. Uh, and then uh, talking to experts uh, from our different advisory boards at Adweek just for their take. We're, you know, last week was week one. This is week two. And it's going to be many more weeks from here on out for our company and for so many brands and agencies and tech companies. Um, everybody really yeah absolutely no i think um just the story of how that story came together is pretty amazing we had um obviously uh, you know we work weeks in advance um on our, our print cover stories in particular and we had a different story planned for this monday um pivoted quickly last week and uh put out essentially you know a, a quick survey um to uh you know several dozen um you know cmos ceos from agencies from brands and uh, got back uh responses from 16 of them really fantastic real-time responses about how they are again navigating this in the moment so we heard from uh martin sorrell uh we heard from uh, davica bolshandani uh, president of mccann north america uh colleen de Corsi with widen and kennedy uh, Rob Schwartz with TBWA, so many people weighed in. Um, it was just really, really great to kind of get their candor in the moment. Um, one example, I'm actually pulling it up on my screen here, um, Davika uh, from McCann, um, sure, was talking about how to navigate a crisis. And she said that Churchill said, never let a crisis go to waste. And we aren't. 
we're more uh, deeply adopting technology like uh, Microsoft Teams and other new approaches to building culture remotely, uh, which will allow, allow us to emerge from this stronger. So I think that's kind of interesting, uh, just her pointing out how times of crisis can really be um, moments when uh, innovation accelerates, right? We all have to move faster, think on our feet. So we mm -hmm. you know, mentioned we, we ourselves have probably 15% of our, our journalists are remote, are remote all the time. And yet we've never used video conferencing. We always just do like a dial in. And I've heard from so many of our remote employees about actually how amazing the last week has been because now they really feel connected. They can see us. We're all on Zoom. Uh, yeah. And yeah. yeah. Chris, maybe you can you can share a bit about the the cover as well. I think that that image has become so iconic. Yeah. In addition to that, but I'm gonna Nick is our, is producing this. He's he's behind the scenes actually cutting the the shots in and out. Uh, the other thing that Lisa Granelstein, our editor, did um, in the magazine was an editor's letter. What she did is she took one of our Zoom happy hours that we did last week um, as sort of the cover art for that visual. And it just really shows how that, that kind of technology is being used, you know, across the industry, just to be able to to, to continue to, to communicate. So that's just one of the ways. Um, one of the other things that we started at Adweek pretty early on, and a lot of publications also did this, was just tracking um, how this story had developed. You know, in late January, early February, it was a health story. It was something that you know a B two B publication wouldn't necessarily cover. Well, that quickly turned um, by early February into something, yes, we're going to be covering this. And so now how do we cover it? Um, so by, I think, the early March, we had a, a tracker that monitored all of the cancellations of big events, South by Southwest being, of course, the biggest one. Um, and then it turned into um, the shutdowns and the stay in place orders, which affected just every business you can imagine, restaurants, businesses. Um, and so the tracker has been trying to update our audience on all of those sorts of things too, that uh, retail stores closing, restaurants closing, you know, the, the, whether they're mom and pop restaurants or the, the big chains, uh, McDonald's and, and et cetera. So um, that's all, that's one way we've been able to sort of update our audience on a minute by minute basis of, of how it affects them, both as brands and, and agencies uh, and consumers. And it is, um, I think you're hitting on something that I'm hearing from so many people is just how quickly uh, the situation changes and the news cycle and our understanding of it changes. And I'm thinking back to, you know, the Monday after uh, South by Southwest announced that it was going to cancel and the team leaders in our newsroom all got together and we had, you know, like a, a long brainstorming session about just, wow, what is the fallout of South by Southwest canceling and all of the activations that were supposed to happen, all the announcements that were supposed to happen, how our business is pivoting. And it's amazing that we've, you know, so that, that seemed like a really big deal. And now to me, South by almost feels like a blip um, yeah. now here in New York where we have uh, this week all non-essential businesses uh, closing or, or moving remote. Um, and so, yeah, our, our tracker is just one example of how we've had to keep, you know, evolving our coverage. What started as a cancellation tracker is now a broader economic tracker. Right. Absolutely. And uh, Robert Clare, who covers brands for us um, and has for many years, uh, had a great story last week about how some of these brands, they're not selling products, they're giving them away. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and, and what yeah. Robert brought to the fore in that story? So this was um, the second most popular story on our site last week. The, the most popular one uh, was actually about um, how Pornhub's traffic has changed as we've moved to a remote, uh, you know, a work a work from home culture, and as the workday has been disrupted. Um, Josh Sternberg wrote that one. Uh, our second most popular story was about how brands. Um, yeah, are really sort of using this as an opportunity to build goodwill uh, with their customers. And so um, it gave examples of everything from, you know, um, Google allowing free access to Hangouts to uh, a PR firm that opened up its supply closet and realized it had like, I don't know, 200 rolls of toilet paper. You know, they, they had a big stash of toilet paper and I uh, started handing them out, I think like on the side of the road. So I think it's it, it has been... Um, neat to see brands sort of taking it as an opportunity to super serve um, their customers. On the media side, you know, we've seen a lot of media businesses 
um, uh, you know, lifting paywalls or loosening paywalls so people can read coronavirus coverage. Um, we ourselves are um, making all of our coronavirus stories, um, even ones that would have been premium um, free, you know, as long as you're registered on our site, uh, you just sign up with an email address, you don't have to pay and you can read anything we've, we've done about coronavirus. Um, Chris, something on my mind too is just the medical front. I mean, obviously it's, it's come to light uh, just uh, how much our hospitals and our doctors are, are going to be needing help in the weeks and months ahead. Um, for personal experience, I can tell you I'm, I'm like seven and a half months pregnant um, and we just got word you know, last night that one of the largest hospital uh, groups in New York uh, will not be allowing partners at birth. So that's really big news. Um, and so, uh, Chris, I know you've been kind of tracking this about how companies are stepping in to help with supplies. What are some interesting things that you've seen there? Yeah, so Ford actually put out both its chairman, Bill Ford, and its CEO and president on the different morning shows this morning, talking about how, you know, they had to shut down their assembly lines um, as, you know, mandated or guided by the federal government and their state governments. So what they are doing is they're turning over their assembly lines and, and creating, um, turning them into to making ventilators, which, it, you know, it's hard enough to make a car and all the parts that go into that, but uh, as the president Ford described it this morning, it's, it can be just as complicated to make a ventilator. But they're going to do it. They're partnering with GE. They're also partnering with 3M. Um, so major brands um, who wouldn't ordinarily necessarily be working together just to get more of these ventilators into the supply chain. And they figure by the beginning of June, they could, they could be producing 100,000 of these out into the hospitals for as long as this is going to be going on and necessary. So, um, you know, this is where... This is where we are now. This is where the big brands are, are, are stopping what, you know, manuf American manufacturing, stopping what they normally produce to sort of get us through this uh, and get the hospitals and the medical facilities, the protective equipment um, and, and the medical equipment that they need. Yeah, I think I saw something just this morning about H&M, I believe it was, um, offering to start sewing, you know, like protective gear and, and masks and things like that. So yeah. I'm hoping we'll see a lot more of that in the days to come. Yeah, um, Christian Siriano is trying to create the masks. So known as a, as a fashion designer, you know, designing red carpet outfits, he's, he's trying to get his folks as safely as they can to be producing, you know, the medical masks. So right, it's good to see. right. And it's like the Met, the Met Gala is, can you know, one of the many things canceled. So mm -hmm. um, what else are you gonna do? Um, also, you know, I'd love to talk about the creative side of this because, um, you know, I do think we are going to see, we're, we're just starting to see, um, I think, agencies um, and creatives step in here and do some public service campaigns. Um, what have you seen on that front? Yeah, Auto, which is a huge television advertiser, just because I've been watching a lot of TV, as a lot of us have over the last few days, not just streaming, but broadcast television as well. But uh, big car companies are still advertising and they've customized their ads uh, given the current situation. You know, Toyota has an ad out there, sort of we're all in this together kind of feeling. I saw a Hyundai spot this morning, which actually mentioned COVID-19 in their spot saying, if you've been affected by COVID-19, we're here for you. Now, no one's going to be, I can't imagine a Hyundai dealership, at least where we are in the tri-state area, that's open now. But at some point, there's going to be some goodwill out there from, from somebody who's in the market to buy a car. And they're going to perhaps remember this and then also take advantage of these incentives that might be available because we just, again, we don't know, I'm talking about the economic side of this, um, what the job losses are going to be, what the, what the total economic losses are going to be. Um, and we leave that to the CNBCs and the Fox businesses of the world. We'll cover the brands and the advertising side of it. Um, but one of the other stories that we, we wrote yesterday, Katie Lundstrom, who's our reporter down in, in Austin, wrote this pretty uh, cute story about how some brands are having to affect just their logos in this time. And, and um, you know, the Chiquita banana logo where Miss Chiquita has gone home. So uh, it's just the, the, the yellow that we know from Chiquita banana uh, without Miss Chiquita. Uh, Coca-Cola, you know, their iconic logo, script logo, which goes back to basically the founding of the formula in the late 1800s, separating the letters just to sort of show um, separation, you know, the, the, the separation that we all need from each other 
is what's needed right now. Yeah, and we um, we had a story um, I, I, in our creativity vertical yesterday about a spec ad, so it wasn't even an official ad, but that somebody did for Guinness, where um, it's sort of a black background. It, it looks like a, a, a Guinness pint um, with a couch, the color of foam at the top. And from a distance, it really just looks like, you know, a, a glass of beer and you look closer and you realize it's a call to stay home, uh, which our creativity editor, David Reiner, was like, this is, if you're going to do a spec ad, you got to knock it out of the park. And, and these people really did. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know, some, some big news this morning, just speaking about advertising, um, is the, the Olympics decided to cancel. They had, mm -hmm. they had dragging their feet. Um, I think as early as March 17th, you know, they were they were saying that they were still supportive of going forward with it. Um, but the Olympic Committee, you know, and uh, Japan's prime minister, um, you know, announced that they're going to postpone it for one year. Um, and interestingly, uh, in the summer of 2021, they will still call it the 2020 Olympics. Um, that obviously is is going to mean a lot of things for NBC Universal. They had uh, they had booked I think 1.25 billion in ad sales around it already. 90% uh, of the inventory was full, um, and uh, and also I think they were they were really planning their campaign around releasing the Peacock streaming service in yeah. conjunction with this. Am I right? That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And. And we'll do a little plug here to promote tomorrow's show. I know you're going to be bringing on Kelsey Sutton, who's our streaming editor, who can talk more about that. But just what streaming has meant to all of us as we, uh, you know, start the sort of new normal being at home. Absolutely. And on uh, on that note, um, I want to ask you before we before we close out today. Um, you've been working from home a week now. Actually, no, you were you were a trooper. You went into the office a couple of days last week. <laughs> But last Tuesday, I went, last Tuesday I went in and I was like, "No, this 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 can all be done from home." Yeah, uh, Chris is going down with the ship. Um, <laughs> no, but, uh, anyway, I'm glad that you're home now. I'm glad that you're being safe. And I'm wondering, uh, what tip would you pass along uh, after working from home for a few days? You know, I, I was thinking about this um, earlier today, um, and you know, I've I've learned how to be a better listener. Frankly, it sounds a little schmaltzy, but. Um, you know, when you're in the office and you have someone coming up to your desk, it's that eye-to-eye -eye contact, or you're going to someone's desk and you're talking to them. It's much easier to listen in that kind of situation. We're going to have to, for the next couple of months, uh, you know, sort of rediscover how we listen to each other if it's on Slack. If someone slacks you and has a problem because they can't get into the Zoom room, how do you react to that? How do you listen to them? How do you coach them through it? So I'm sort of like, you know, keeping that, that manager hat on and, and get the entire team through it and just trying to reach out as much as we can. I know you're doing the same thing. Um, and just to be a better listener in, in new and different ways. Yeah, I love that so much. I do think I am finding uh, that I'm having to be much more intentional about my, my interactions because when we're all in the office together, you can kind of walk through the newsroom and get a vibe and get a sense of how everyone is doing. And it's very easy to have quick conversations, you know, in the hallway or at people's desks and uh, being home, I'm realizing, you know, the, there's no way to know how everyone is doing and what everyone is working on unless we really are intentional about it. So for right. me, I think, um, you know, something that, that I've been trying to do is have a schedule um, where again, just to be intentional, where my mornings are about meetings, um, both group meetings and also one-on-ones. And I've been trying to check in with people, not even necessarily my direct reports, but just having one-on-one -on -one video chats with people. Um, and that's been really helpful. And then my afternoons are more for creative and strategy time, you know, where I'll be writing um, or, you know, sort of prepping for our early morning strategy call the next day. And then in between, I take a walk. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I really do. Yeah. So anyway, well, great. I, I really, Chris, thank you so much for helping me kick this off today. Yeah, thank um, you. And just for everything that you've been doing for our staff and for our yeah. readers. Um, thank you to everyone tuning in. It's really, it's great to have you here. Uh, we're going to be doing this at one o'clock uh, just about every day. Uh, so as Chris mentioned, tomorrow, uh, Kelsey Sutton, who's our streaming editor and part of our TV team, is uh, is going to join me to talk about, we'll talk about the Olympics, but 
Um, also, even bigger, I think we're going to talk about you know what the streaming services are doing. This is actually a pretty key time for them um, as we are all home watching TV. Um, and also, just so you know, you can you can find this a few places. So tomorrow at one, you can tune in on adweek.com. You'll see a story on our homepage that you can click through and just watch watch this live right from our site. Um, you can also watch it live on Adweek's account on LinkedIn, and you can comment there too. Um, so we'd love to hear from you. And then after it's recorded, it'll be posted on IGTV. So you'll be able, if you don't catch it live, don't worry, you can, uh, you can still find it in three different places. Um, one last thing I'll share is that we have an email account. Uh, it's adweektogether at adweek.com. And please uh, write in and tell us if you're interested in being a guest, uh, let us know what topics would be useful for you, what questions you have, and we'll bring some of your questions and commentary uh, into this show, you know, in the days ahead. So thanks so much again, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Nick, thanks, behind the scenes, thanks for producing. And to all of our readers, have a great afternoon.